Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. It is now March, and that means it's time to look back again at the highlights in the field of longevity science. So let's get started. Remember, to find out more about any of these topics, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Following the success of our first webinar, which saw the participation of around 30 people, the LEAF team is going to host a second one, this time on the topic of the human microbiota, the bacteria in our gut, and its connection to aging. The webinar, announced in late February, will be held on April 8th and will feature numerous special guests. Our monthly patrons, the Lifespan Heroes, will have the opportunity to join the webinar live and ask questions during the Q&A session and they'll have early access to a recording of the show, well before it's released to the public. The LEAF team is also currently in the process of organizing our second conference in New York City, and we recently released an update about the speakers who will present at the two-day event, including Dr. Vera Gorbanova from Rochester University, Dr. Vadim Gladyshev from Harvard Medical School, Dr. Aubrey de Grey from the SENS Research Foundation, and many more. You can currently save money by taking advantage of our early bird ticket option until March 31st and save $50 off the regular price. We also have updates on another LEAF project. Outreach Director Elena Malova has been developing a School of Longevity Journalism to educate reporters on the topic of aging research, and on February 26th, she co-chaired the second event in partnership with the local Media Institute for Public Health. During the event, Dr. Vadim Gladyshev gave an overview of what we know about aging and what are the most promising areas of research, while Elena shared tips on how to write an article that would be understandable, accurate, and interesting to the public. Here's Dr. Gladyshev with more. First, I think it's a great idea to organize a school like this uh, for journalists because our area of of science, uh, aging research, is an area which particularly needs uh, correct reporting of the data. Um, as we all know, um, the area, I mean, it's, at least in some ways, is controversial because there are data which suggest that um, various factors could increase lifespan and the same factors could decrease lifespan. Uh, it's very important uh, that um, uh, research in the field is reported uh, in the best way possible, correct, but at the same time, ex- you know, represent excitement that we have that we have in the field. For this reason, it's really important to uh, educate uh, journalists, tell them um, uh, some basics about aging, so that uh, they would uh, offer them tools to, you know, to critically think about uh, research that they write about. And I'm glad that uh, uh, various journalists from so 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 different uh, uh, media came, and I think we had a very very nice discussion. Uh, various topics we covered, from fundamental science to to culture, to um, ethics, to uh, best approaches for journalism. I, I think um, I would look forward to additional events like this, and if invited, would be glad to participate. Elena is now planning to run a school in New York City. We'll keep you updated as the details are announced. There were also some noteworthy interviews recently posted on Lifespan.io. During his attendance at the Longevity Leaders Conference, LEAF Board Director Steve Hill had a chance to catch up with i Therapeutics CSO Kelsey Moody and ask him about the current progress and future plans at i one of the companies pushing forward the rejuvenation biotech industry. Javier Norris, the coordinator of LEAF's Longevity Investor Network, brought us an interview with Lynn Investor, Sebastian Aguilar. In his interview, Sebastian explained where his interest in this field came from 
and talked about his experience in and views on the longevity investment sector. Both of these interviews can be found at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. We have a lifespan.io campaign update for you. The team from Mouse Age, the app to monitor aging that we successfully crowdfunded in late 2017, has been hard at work, and their project was recently featured in The Scientist, in which a number of researchers discuss how useful this free app could be in the lab. They've also announced partnerships with the Buck Institute for Research on Aging, Charles River Laboratories, and Moscow State University. More updates can be found on our website. Whether you are advocating for life extension or other causes, advocacy is a hard job. But in the case of life extension, discussions are bound to be ridden with all manner of logical fallacies. That's why we've put together the Life Extensionist Guide to Logical Fallacies, which has just undergone a thorough update and a graphical revamp. You can find it at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for our research roundup. A recent publication from researchers at the University of North Carolina and other institutions suggests that a specific type of P16 protein might be a potential biomarker for senescent cells. Newcastle University scientists have shown that it is possible to reverse heart aging in mice by eliminating senescent cells in the heart. The work, which was done in collaboration with the Mayo Clinic in the U.S. and INSERM in France, used both a genetic and a small molecule approach to destroying senescent cells in the hearts of old mice. This research was published by the EMBO Journal. Here's something you may want to be aware of. A Wistar Institute study, published in Nature Cell Biology, suggests that increased NAD levels influence activity of senescent cells and, in turn, can promote tumor growth. This could raise concerns for the use of NAD augmenting supplements as a nutraceutical with anti-aging benefits. According to a recent study from researchers at the University of California, Los Angeles, a biomarker known as DNA methylation Grim Age, which was named after the Grim Reaper, predicts both health and lifespan with significantly more accuracy than chronological age. The study was published in the journal Aging. In a study that may not come as a surprise, NIH scientists published research in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute showing a clear link between older biological age measured via epigenetic clocks and breast cancer risk in women. Researchers from Case Western Reserve University's School of Medicine published a study on aging cell showing that transplanted blood cells appear to maintain their same DNA methylation patterns. This means that older blood cells implanted into younger bodies and younger blood cells implanted into older bodies seem to always reflect the age of the donor even many years after transplant. Swiss scientists published a study on the link between RNA binding proteins, or RBPs, and aging. RBPs help modulate several age-related pathologies as well as two notable hallmarks of aging, mitochondrial dysfunction and cellular senescence. These proteins do this by controlling whether or not the mRNAs they bind to get translated into their final protein forms. According to a study by Harvard researchers, a new type of aging clock, called the ribosomal clock, is a measure of biological age as accurate as the existing epigenetic clock. Researchers at the Salk Institute published a paper outlining a CRISPR-based method to reduce the buildup of progerin, a protein-driving progeria, a rare genetic condition that causes accelerated aging. The study may prove useful not just for future treatment against progeria, but also to shed light on some mechanisms of aging. A study published on communications biology shows that transplanting bone marrow from young mice into old mice slows down cognitive decline, which could provide insights into the progression of neurodegenerative diseases in humans and provide insight on how to slow them down. A study by scientists from the Pasteur Institute in France found that transferring gut microbiota from young mice into older mice resulted in significant improvement of the older mice's cognitive abilities. Conversely, microbiota from old mice impaired the memory and learning skills of younger mice, hinting to a strong effect of gut microbiota on at least some aspects of aging. You can find more information on any of the studies mentioned in our research roundup at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. 
And now for some news nuggets. The CEO of the organization Long Long Life recently gave a TEDx talk on the topic of measuring aging. How, why, and how important is this in the fight against aging? The talk is in French, but subtitles in English are available, as is an English transcription of the talk. A new interview with Dr. Nir Barzilai, published by Life Biosciences on Medium, explains how most people look at aging the wrong way, as individual diseases to cure, rather than a more fundamental set of processes to interfere with. He also discusses metformin and the hottest topic in the fields to date, senolytics. The Academy for Health and Lifespan Research, a nonprofit set up by 16 leading scientists in the field of aging research, is now operating in Boston and will seek to speed up the rise of rejuvenation biotechnology. The Academy will organize research forums and lobby governments for more aging research funds, as well as advocate for the introduction of new regulatory pathways to ease therapy development. LEAF writer Patrick Dean concluded our series on the hallmarks of aging with an article discussing the altered intercellular communication hallmark. More on this can be found on our website. LEAF volunteer Tam Hunt attended the Longevity Therapeutic Summit held in San Francisco in January, and he brought us a report on the talks from the experts who attended the event. A recent article published by the MIT Technology Review reports on small dacitinib quercetin trial conducted on 14 volunteers suffering from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The trial was successful in that the senolytic drugs appeared to have improved some measures of well-being in the patients, and it may open the way for larger trials. A recent article published by the MIT Technology Review reports on a small dacitinib quercetin trial conducted on 14 volunteers suffering from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The trial was successful in that the senolytic drugs appeared to have improved some measures of well-being in the patients, and it may open the way for larger trials. In a Forbes article, Dr. Alex Zavarankov, CEO of Instilico Medicine, discusses effective altruism and how, in his opinion, focusing on rejuvenation biotechnology is the most effective way to direct one's altruistic efforts. Coming up in March, the Undoing Aging 2019 conference will be held in Berlin on March 28th through 30th. UA 2019 is a joint effort by the SENS Research Foundation and the Forever Healthy Foundation, and it will feature luminaries in aging from all over the world, such as Dr. Judy Campisi, Dr. Julie K. Anderson, Dr. Jerry Shea, Dr. Nir Barzilai, and many more. The LEAF team will also be attending. Here's more on Undoing Aging from Frank Schuler of Kazoo Technology Capital and the Forever Healthy Foundation. We started the conference Undoing Aging last year for the first time, and after an incredible success uh, 2018 with 350 participants from 36 countries and over 40 brilliant speakers, we turned Undoing Aging into an annual conference series. And some of the presentation from last year's conference are still online, can be found on our Undoing Aging YouTube channel. This year, Undoing Aging 2019 will take place in Berlin and again at the Umspannwerk Alexanderplatz from March 28th to 30th. Well, it's getting close to fall, so please speed up to get your ticket soon if you're interested in going. The conference is again focused on cellular and molecular repair of age-related damage. We will have scientists and startups from around the globe, all pioneers in their respective fields, leading the charge in maintaining and restoring full health in old age. We're not open to the scientific community only, but welcome all members of the broader Uvenation movement and interested media. There will be a poster session and lots of networking opportunities during two and a half full days and nights. Why are we doing this? Well, Forever Healthy has two key goals uh, for this conference. Uh, first, to support the remarkable scientific community already working on repair of age-related damage. And second, to create a unique opportunity for the broader scientific world to experience that the possibility of bringing aging under complete, genuine medical control is realistic, achievable and indeed beginning to happen. 
We are very much looking forward to make Undoing Aging 2019 every bit as memorable as Undoing Aging 2018. And to check out the impressive lineup of our speakers on the program details, please visit www.undoing-aging.org. Hope to see you there, and thank you. Remember, if you'd like to help us hasten the defeat of aging, you can support us by becoming a Lifespan Hero. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about it on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Mm-hmm.